You did it. After months of fighting, untold millions of atrocities committed, and an unholy alliance with the Iron Warriors, the Night Lords have finally earned their day in the sun and escaped the loser's bracket. I'm so proud of them. I'm Isander. I'm Coda. And today we're going to be covering the Night Lords. Uh, specifically, there's going to be some slight spoilers for a few books, The Night Haunter, The Prince of Crows, and a, and a few others. Um, I pull from basically all of them because... It's necessary to paint a full image of them. Um, as always, you know, you guys decide the next few episodes we do. The options are the Ultramarines, Inquisitors, and the Heroes of the Imperium. Duke it out in the comments. The Night Lords have their thing. They skinned what they needed to skin and they're out. They have no more skin in the game. Okay? So it's up they, to the rest of you. They took it all. They have it all. Which we're going to get to that later. We will get to that later. Mm -hmm. Skin plays a vital role in this episode. It's a Night Lord episode. Of course it does. Now... We will get to the Night Lords in a bit, but the best way to establish the Night Lords is to completely ignore them for a moment. Uh -huh. We're going to push them to the side, and trust me on this. Um, You're going to make them wait just a little bit longer for their prize. Oh, of course, yeah. Of course. Uh, we're going to start with the Second World War. Ah, mm -hmm. well, because that's a great place to start, isn't it? Like I said, let me cook. Trust me. This is important. Um, during the Second World War, there were multiple bombing campaigns. It was terrible. It was horrific. Pretty much Every side had constant airstrikes happening all the time. Families were separated. Children went to the countryside so they wouldn't get bombs dropped on them during math. I mean, it was horrific. And the Brits were lounging in the subways. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of... I think my favorite thing about those images is horrific time. The people are firming it. In all of the pictures, there's bombs going on up ahead. They're sleeping and on they're the just floor. Like... And they're just, whatever, bring it. And I can't help but respect that. That's, they, they know where they stand, and they're standing there. I mean, to be fair, they're perpetually getting rained on. This is just more violent rain. Pretty much. You take that more violent rain, uh, you add to all the people lost in ground, sea, and air operations. And, I mean, even counting the Soviet losses, because... There were a lot of... So many. Well, Zukov discovered this interesting thing where if you don't care about casualties, you can accomplish a lot. <laughs> And let me tell you, have you seen the number of medals he got for that? The Soviet Union, they, they won by any means necessary, pretty much. Um, and to be fair, also, they were just assaulted several times. Yeah, yeah. Regardless, you take all of that, you mash it together, and you have the recipe for a death toll in the tens of millions. Entire families entered that war and weren't there once the dust settled. It's horrifying and to this day has a tangible real scar across just the human psyche pretty much most of our current geopolitics ties to that happening and a bunch of other stuff if you really want to go really far back it's one guy getting shot named franz or you could even go further back from that however that's what matters for today time is a flat circle we're traveling in a line at the same time i don't know i can't explain it yeah um the flavor changes the results are the same basically uh fighting most other primarchs feels like the second world war it's just it's just violence on a scale you can't fathom you're lining up and your sons are just not coming back over and over and over again and this isn't like World War II, where at least it was lateral throws. It's still humans against humans, right? No, that guy's eight feet tall and basically bulletproof. So come on, right? You can see how even the kindest of legions, the salamanders, leave an ocean in their wake of just bodies, right? Well, char. I'll give you kudos for that. It is char. You're learning. <laughs> Yeah, char, ashes, in the background. Um, there is one exception to that rule of stacking bodies as high as you can get them, and it's the Night Lords. They actually, they, canon, don't leave behind as many bodies as all their brothers. And that's because, not only, because again, part of the reason their brothers win is because they are pretty much always a superior force. It's very rare that a Primarch and his legion are looking at the same thing, and it's a lateral throw. They're, 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 they're really strong. They're really, really they're strong. They're really strong. Um, but it's not only just, oh, that's a superior force. This is difficult to go against. It's a superior force, and it's not using that strength to grind you into a paste. But instead, they're just kidnapping school children all day. And they'll return them to you. Bones are over there. Sinews are over there. Skin's over there. You can piece it back together, baby. And they do that 
every day like clockwork at three o'clock with a special gong they'll sound. So you know it's going to happen. And there's just nothing you can do to stop it. How long do you think you'll hold out against that? Not very. And that's exactly how they keep their casualties so low. Because not only is it terror, it's terror being used by a superior force. So, because usually, like, in warfare, terror is used by inferior forces who need to use guerrilla tactics to win. You know, it's, it's, it's rarely a lateral throw from you we doing can't, it. We can't play the numbers game, yeah. so let's play the psych a game. Exactly, which is why we don't negotiate with terrorists works, because... <laughs> When you put your full back into it, yeah, you really don't need to, right? But the problem is, they're up here, and they're terrorizing you from up there. So it's less of a situation of, oh, this is bad. This is scary. It's, no, I can't win. I can't even get the guarantee of death. The only thing guaranteed by holding out against them is suffering. So let me just give up. And that's the Night Lords. If I give up, at least I get to keep my mm -hmm. orphanage. Yeah, it's it's on the tin. They've said it themselves. Wolves go for the throat. Then they go for the eyes. Then the tongue. Then the hands. Then they skin the crippled remains as an example to anyone else watching. That's a direct quote from them. See? Ick. Yeah. Total <laughs> I can see their philosophy, though. <laughs> total lives lost? Pretty low. Suffering inflicted? Pretty high. Much higher than anyone else. They they specced entirely into, like, uh, psychological damage. Yeah. And that's uh, the reason why a lot of people aren't the biggest fans of the Night Lords, per se, because, uh, I'll be honest, the rest of their family is really far out there. Tomorrow, massive space marines with flamethrowers can't possibly that no no a medieval knight isn't going to a sorry a balding medieval knight is not going to walk out of a forest 1v1 somebody and then teleport out that's just not going to happen we don't have real johnsons anywhere nearby however the night lords people do stuff like they do regularly i mean and their, their entire systems there's entire groups that only function because they propagate fear and it's that very icky and real nature that the night lords have to them that makes a lot of people go no hmm. thank you <laughs> I, I i i i don't like that especially since we live in an era where with literally no effort i'm talking minimal you can find out all the worst things happening to everyone on the planet at the same time and it takes like five minutes of scrolling the internet pretty much it takes more effort not to see that kind of stuff than it does to see it. The wrong, t the wrong turn on Reddit. Maybe mm -hmm. scrolling through those new tick or Twitter, their version of shorts thing. I guess everyone has it. I suppose. Yeah. No. You can literally. You can just wind up in those kinds of places, and it's because that real kind of grit that they have to them at times makes people not the biggest fans. And if you don't believe me, for example, because I know there's, there's a lot of people out there who are like, oh, no, I've seen it all. It can't be that bad. Um, Funky Town. Next question. Uh, <laughs> that is a reference only you are going to get and one other person. That's it. Yeah. Pretty much. That's, that's, by the way, that's the level of stuff they bring to battle. But on a much bigger scale because it's the Night Lords. It's the Night Lords. It's the Night Lords. And um, <laughs> it's eight foot tall Funky Town. Yeah. God, am I sorry for that reference. Um, <laughs> and however, there's somehow it gets worse because uh, there's no better example of uh, the night, what the night lords are so fond of doing in their spare time uh, than Conrad Kurz's Screaming Gallery. Yeah. Uh, his what? His brothers told him to get a hobby. And so he did. He likes pacing around in his office and uh, changing up the decor. So... <laughs> Some AP, I assume... Like what I've just done, you know, new LEDs for the, the room, you know, give it that weird lighting effect. His requires a small army to keep it working. Yeah. Because. Well, mine only requires five volts. Yeah, well, you, you, it's a different scale. Oh. You have LEDs on your wall. Um, he's got layer after layer after layer hidden behind the walls of machinery meant only to simulate vital organs. So massive pumps that move literal gallons of blood around in there, dialysis machines, the whole nine. It's one big fake human body. And you could be wondering, okay, weird, but why would he need that behind his walls? And that's because 
On his walls, he's got faces and bodies stitched and mashed together, kept alive by dark magic and the aforementioned machines and that small army. And it's not a panel. It's not a wall. It's all four walls and the ceiling and the floor. It's like, you know, those people who do the open concept computers where they mount all of the pieces onto a wall instead of a case. It's like that, but organic. Yeah. It's, it's, it's literally an amalgam of human suffering. Men, women, children, seniors. It doesn't matter. They're all stitched there. They're all being kept alive. They are awake and conscious. They are fed daily. They will heal from anything Kurz does to them. Sometimes it's whole faces. Sometimes it's eyes. Sometimes it's just the nose, tongues. Yeah. And he will prance about in there either fully clothed on in armor, literally stomping on faces because he can, or stark naked wearing a cloak. Yuck. And it's described as a metaphor for his mind. Uh, because <laughs> this is what he's... Yes, it's, that all is a metaphor to Kurz, by the way. That's a, uh, because that, that is a representation of what he's like on the inside. The room is what he would do to everything if he could turn it into what's going on up here. That's a very heavy-handed metaphor. It's a very heavy-faced metaphor. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's disturbing to even some of the other night lords who have to walk into his office. I mean, honestly, it's not a good metaphor because you can read it at face value. I I wouldn't say that to him directly. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't question it because he might value my face on the floor. Yeah, pretty much. Thankfully for everyone, though, uh, the night lords are a mostly spent force because you have to remember legions stick after their dad. So if their dad has that going on in their heads. Somewhere in their heads, there's something like that bouncing around, too. So they're super spent. Uh, they're a shadow. It's an infinitely dark shadow, but it's still a shadow that is not cast anywhere near as far without the larger-than-life figure that is Kurz. Because once... Yeah, here's something you have to realize about Kurz. He hates his kids. He hates them. We'll get to that a little bit later, but um, he's the only Primarch to look at his kids with disgust. He genuinely does not care for them. I mean, even Percherabo is, there's no disgust there. It's just like, mm, you're not working as efficiently as I want you to. Exactly. Exactly. Um, nowadays, they don't spend a lot of their time sneaking. They can. They can. Um, but it's, they choose not to because the element of surprise, and this is a very fair argument for it, it has a window, you know? You can only use it, you know, once it's used, it's used, and you only have like a golden opportunity to use it. And if the enemy can rally... That's it. It's, then it's wasted. It's wasted. However, fear is a weapon that only gets sharper the more you use it. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. So they don't care, and they honestly prefer if you know they're coming, because it only builds that dread. It only makes it far worse, and each time, it only builds to their myth. It's why all their battle cries are very cool, and the most frequent one you're going to see in the comment is, we have come for you. <laughs> because there are times they will take over ship systems and they'll just play over and over we have come for you we have come for you we have come for you and everyone just immediately knows oh frightening mm, great yeah, yeah and a whole slaughter will be happening while that's just playing in the background there's nothing you can do about it they are fully inevitable it's like a sunrise with a potato peeler well it's true it is and if you think that that may not be the most effective route, uh, Kurz went to work, and one year later, there was zero crime on his planet. Well, because all the criminals were uh, not around. Mm, no, they were still around. They just didn't do it. Ah. I mean, you, you think about it this way. Batman, you know, he's got... In, in one year, he got the brakes beaten off of him. I'm not going to lie. And he only has to handle Gotham, which is like New York. Bad not that bad. It's right? only a borough of New York, too. Exactly. However, however, compared to his homeworld of Nostromo, it's kind of a joke. Because Batman deals with, like, schizophrenics and clown makeups, penguins, and giant crocodiles. And your average guy every so often. Your average person. Actually. Exactly. Weird things, but it's fine. It's a comic book. It's a man dressed as a bat. It's it's whatever, it's cool. Um, Nostromo's not the fun, cool kind of crime. It's like the real, like, children. There's, there's a scene of children walking home from school. 
by the way, the, just to set the scene, the entire planet is eternally dark and pretty much always raining. So it always looks like the night scenes in Gotham. Yeah, actually, it really does. Um, but there's a scene of children walking home from school and they just like pass an alleyway and see the worst crimes you can commit to a woman just happening outside in the streets and another adult doesn't step in doesn't tell them to stop he just says hey kids keep it pushing you don't want them to see your face mm. it's that kind of crime uh yeah it's it's crime crime it's it's the real happens in our world crime. it's a yeah it's not yeah <laughs> i've rigged this train to blow up batman better save all the civilians it's it's real crime yeah no, it's, 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 it's crime, yeah, crime no like mothers will have to hide their brands from their kids so they don't know like it's 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 bad it's, it's, it's bad bad not want to live there at all it's the it's the it's it's actual crimes it, it's crimes against humanity itself it's the stuff we like to pretend doesn't happen it's indiscriminate it's unrepentant and it's repulsive which is why people like Kurz because he tamped all of that down in a year it wasn't happening anymore and even though he does enforce the death penalty for jaywalking, nobody jaywalks anymore. So, relative... Yeah, but I, get, I have to get across the street right now. I promise you, you will try and you will get jibbed midway through. Like a blur will appear and you will just be red mist. It, it's not worth it. You can just say I'm late. Everyone will understand. I couldn't jaywalk. Fair enough. Don't break the law. That's how it is. Um, relative to the real horrors on the planet, Curse just sounds like a reasonable, reasonable response to that level of just... Uh, right? And, and, again, he is an absolute lunatic. Right? Let me, let me just be very clear. Curse is not mentally sound if the skin room didn't tell you enough. He's the Primarch who needs the most therapy... And one of his brothers is named Angron. <laughs> and he's not the one who needs the therapy. I think that gives an accurate scale for that. Is Yeah. 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 Um, however, uh, there's a scene that made Kurz really grow on me. And it's, uh, it's I'll just describe it to you. Because it's, it's, it's an important one. It's a very, it's a very Kurz scene. Um, uh, great. Let me mentally prepare for a moment. Okay, we're good. Okay. Uh, to set the scene, uh, there's a lady at the end of her rope like in and i'm not talking like in a, in a melodramatic oh whoa is me i'm talking in a real way her apartment is described as having multiple locks on the doors that are just scarred beyond belief the door has been knocked off its hinges 10 times the locks have been melted before like it's barely holding on the apartment is disheveled and dark she has never felt safe here at all it's a real slum that could exist somewhere Okay? It's almost impossible to feel safe in a place like that. However, with her husband, there was at least hope. She made her feel safe even though they were in the pits of hell. Okay? But he's dead now. And his finest clothes are laying on the bed in an outline of a man, but even that's nowhere near the same thing. She can even barely remember his face after trying for so long. And nothing really cared nothing changed nothing slowed down nobody stopped by the world just kept on pushing like he never even existed and she sits there dressed in her finest clothing something that matches that suit on the bed being the only person who really knows and mourns him and so in this moment even though she wants to end it all with some shred of dignity she can't help but cry at the very real memory of this guy. They're poor. They didn't. They couldn't afford to take pictures together. She can barely even remember him, right? And as her body is racked with sorrow, mourning for the loss of her better half, and crying in the very unfortunate way that she's about to join him, the locks begin to give. One at a time, very carefully and quietly, each lock is severed and the door is opened, the environment before this is described as noxious. The air is thick with not only just smog from all the chemicals, but trash, 
overcrowded, unclean, sweaty streets mixing with the coppery scent of dried and aged blood. It's terrible smelling. However, the moment that door swings open, a smell that can only be described as death itself fills the room. No filter can clear it out. And she hears a voice behind her say, I have come for you. She's beyond confused because up until this point, I'll be honest, she's not broken a law. She did everything the Night Haunter said. You Like, there are rules. They are everywhere. They're stapled to that guy right there. I know what not to do. And so all her life, she's followed all the rules. All her life. Her husband followed all the rules. Both of them are fine. Why are you here right now? And he says, it's not your life that concerns me. It's the way you're choosing to die. <laughs> because that is a crime. Now, I'm going to be honest. Does it really matter if you die by your own hand or the Night Haunter? No, not, not really. Not, not particularly, one would argue, right? I mean, get, come on. Effectively, we're packing it up and we're calling it a day here. The means don't really matter. However, he argues that dying by your own hand is the most heinous crime you can commit because even though Nostromo is not a happy world at all, it can can be a better one. And by choosing to leave, by choosing to take the easy way out, his words, not mine, you encourage others to do the same. And you may think, oh, I'm only adding to statistics. So many other people do this, but it's far worse than that. With each instance of this happening, the rot gets stronger and stronger. Every single life abandoned not only reinforces that things cannot get better, but throws away the chance that you could have been the one to make it even 1% better. So effectively, you're guaranteeing things will only get worse. All you've done is lower the odds. And that right there is a compelling argument. I mean, it's a compelling argument. It's at least fascinating. Bare uh, minimum. Punishing that crime is... Uh... I would say not really the most effective way to deal with it, but it's a sound argument. It, it's, it's an interesting argument, and it puts this, it puts his perspective in this weird spot where he cares a lot, possibly more than any of his Primarch brothers, about the individual human life, while also not caring at all. <laughs> because at the end of the day, it's curse. Like, come on, skin room, buddy, skin room. He right? cares so much he's looped around to uh, not caring at all, kind of like nuclear Gandhi. We're, yeah, sure. That's that's one way to put it. That That's going to be an image created, I suppose. However, it doesn't matter how you feel about this interesting debate, because at the end of the day, he winds up showing why a lot of people aren't big fans of Kurz, and he winds up showing his good nature, because in the book, well, actually, it, well, in the book, he tells her, I'm not going to enjoy this. And, and she's horrified at this point because it's Kurz bearing down on her. You know what he can do, right? And I've seen like art of him like before he got picked up by dad. And mm -hmm. he's, he's an intimidating figure. He's a fairly intimidating figure. Um, but this is a lie. The book confirms it. His heart's are racing with the anticipation of this. And that is why people do not like Kurz. Because here he is slicing with, I'm talking pinpoint accuracy. It's described as he's removing the exact safe amount of skin one can remove just to ensure the most amount of pain over and over and over again and this person is at the lowest moment of their life quite literally looking off the edge of a cliff with feelings that their continued existence is worthless and Kurz is still here doing it for the love of the game that's why people don't like him and especially it's it's twice as tragic when you consider in this moment he, he and only he is in this unique position where he can give people the view from halfway down. Because it doesn't matter how you feel about, you know, that specific situation. Something that is universal in pretty much anyone who has tried and failed or anyone who has survived is a deep want to keep going after that. It's, oh my god, this was such a mistake. And usually they figure it out after trying. Tragically, right? Uh, Curse has the ability... To give you that perspective right now, because you see Kurz and oh my god, do you realize how badly you don't want to die that way? <laughs> that specific way you don't want to go out. And he doesn't use it. He doesn't use it because he's so bipolar about it. He just 
it was a crime. Sorry. Well, actually, not even sorry. Whoops. <laughs> That's it. And this is where the Night Lord fans are going to get a little upset at me. But if I can call the, the Iron Warriors petulant in their episode, which they are, I can call Kurz an absolute doomer in this episode because he only sees the worst in people. To be fair, it's not all the Night Lord's fault. It's it's really not. Again, Nostromo, terrible. It's an awful place. Terrible place. Um, and again, they're also part Kurz. <sighs> Your mental health is not going to be great if you're part Kurz, I'll be honest. However, some accountability has to be taken. <laughs> You know, at some point, the buck has to stop. And my favorite way that this is shown is Kurz is stalking a criminal because it's, it's, this is his other hobby. And it's a young boy. And before he does the whole Night Haunter flay you turn you into a carpet routine. I have come for you routine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he sees two visions. This is very important. Kurz usually only sees the worst possible outcome every single time, which is part of why he's such a doomer because he's like, you can only see the worst things happening to you and your... Like, he shook his dad's hand and knew how his dad was going to die. That will warp your psyche a lot. Just, but just a little. In this moment, he saw two outcomes. The first one is, uh, he lets the boy go. He shows mercy for the first time ever. And they kind of get a Batman and Robin situation going on. And and um, the boy helps him learn how to rehabilitate others. Starting this weird domino effect where he helps shows mercy on the boy... The boy shows mercy to other people, and it just starts in this cascading effect. And at the end of the vision, he sees the planet change almost permanently with all these people thanking him, right? And then the alternate he sees is the moment he hesitates to show mercy, the kid shivs him and runs. And this kid then goes on to become the one human who survived the Night Haunter. This creates a legend overnight he starts climbing this social ladder becoming the biggest criminal possible building new rungs with bones and greasing the machine with blood <sighs> things become worse than ever and when Kurz finally tracks him down the visions end with the same sentence delivered two ways it's the boy saying you made me the only difference between the two visions is one is said with a smile on a happy day the other is choked out through strangulation and so, when faced with those two realities, Kurz just snap goes, not worth it, and just bodies the kid. And then just jibs him. Yeah. Um, the problem is, when he does jib the kid, he notices, the knife wasn't particularly close. And his hands weren't reaching for it either. See what I mean? He's a doomer. He made it worse himself. He's like so caught up in the, oh, things can only go bad that he's self-perpetuating the things can only go bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And ironically enough, despite persecuting people for ending themselves, he effectively ended himself to prove a point because he saw a vision of how he was going to end. And it was a human. It was a reg well, regular-ish human who attacked him. <laughs> ish. Yeah, ish. An assassin sent after him. And Kurz is a Primarch. He could have won this fight. But instead he said, nope, this is great. It proves me right. <laughs> and so he lets it happen in just the biggest fit of hypocrisy there is. Because technically speaking, you know, he, he could have fought on. He could have not contributed to the rot. And yet he did. And yet he did. Mm -hmm. We'll continue to touch on why exactly they're as bad as they are. I just wanted to touch. This isn't a Kurz episode, but you have to mention him. Because, I mean... Every Night Lord has a little bit of curse in them. And he has a particularly twisted psyche, too. Like, you're 100% you're right there, because every Legion takes after their dad, but his psyche is particularly damaged. I mean, like, if you had to hold a pole, most likely to have damage written on their forehead, a la Joker. Yeah, it's probably going to be him. It's probably curse. It's probably going to be him. However, we do need a quick reminder, and that is you guys get to decide on the order of the episodes and when they come out. The options are the Ultramarines, the Inquisition, and the Heroes of the Imperium, which is probably going to be a Kyphus Kane episode, but we'll see what happens. Um, you sound off by voting in the comments, so make your, make your voices heard. Uh, do all the stuff that the... Machine overlords like, you know, like comment, subscribe. We know we know what they like at this point. And uh, if you would like twice as many episodes, literally double as many, uh, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Isander and Coda, where you can binge the massive backlog of stuff. Get priority voting on all the future polls and get your name at the end of these episodes because 
it's how we produce this show. Um, so thank you to all of you that are already there, and thank you to those of you signing up as I speak. Now, let's get back to the Night Lords, because from the beginning, part of why they're doomers is they weren't set up they weren't set up for success in the same way their brothers were. Um, they were recruited from the lowest of the low, even before they met Kurz, before their recruitment came from Nostromo. They were recruited from criminals so terrible they had to be locked up beneath the surface, not even seeing the light of day. The worst of the world, worst, guilty of the most heinous crimes, and they were collectively taken, turned into WMDs with the most unstable personality you could have put them into. Just because. And on top of all of that, they got this strong bipolar sense of justice where um, there is no middle ground. There's, there's only good or bad. There's good or bad. And it's honestly one of the strongest of any of the legions. It's a very, did you do the right thing or will you get retribution put upon thee? That's, that's how it goes. You either, you're either safe or skinless and there's no in between. It's true. It, it is. They like separating skin. I told you to play a violin. It would pay. This is the most skin heavy episode. This is an extra. This is an extremely skin heavy episode. Yeah. I and and we did a Demonculaba episode. Yeah. It's the Night Lords. <laughs> what do you expect? Um, if you end up on the side of evil, nothing is off the table. I mean, nothing. Like I said, Nostromo, Eternal Night, Eternal Rain, Eternal Crime stopped in one year of Kurz putting his back into it. So they they don't. They don't play. They don't it's, play right. And there's no hypocrisy to it. There's no um, corruption to it. It's, oh, you broke the law. That's so fun. And that's the exact approach taken with everyone. It gives them the least bloody footprint, no matter where they happen to be. And it led to most of the worlds that the Night Lords took over having the actual lowest crime rate in the Imperium. I'm talking, okay, Gilliman likes to talk big game about everything is organized perfectly. We have hedges, we have schools, we have healthcare, we have trains that run every single, you will get anywhere you need to go in 30 minutes without needing to drive. That's Gilliman's shtick. Kurz had a lower crime rate. Because, I mean, even Gilliman has margins of error he plans for. Well, it's more like, oh no, what am I going to do? Fair, fair trial, due process. Six months of rehabilitation. And yeah, then no, no, I no. The Night Lords don't have any standing army. They don't have court. They yeah. they see a crime and they throw the human skin leather bound book at you. Yes, pretty much. So if your only metric for a successful place is no crime, then the Night Lords are the best governors for you. If you want to actually live there, I would suggest ultramarines. <laughs> But it's it's true. It's genuinely that that shows how impressive there was effectively no crime because the the terrifying thing about it is it's not oh when the night lords are around you better be careful. It's you commit a crime in the sanctity of your own home and your walls get blown down. <laughs> I don't know how they know. They just do. Stop. Every every single night lord has the like senses mm -hmm. of Superman. <laughs> it seems like it. Um, and the key thing you have to remember there is so long as they're present though like so long as they're somewhere nearby no crime is being committed and it's kind of nice the only thing that is nice about them is it's very cut and dry right or wrong right did I pay my taxes oh, okay they don't care about taxes did I jaywalk yes or no no okay I'm good yes I'm a smear on the pavement this is easy to follow it's that childlike sense of justice you know it's the he punched me in the arm i'm gonna punch him back and that's that's fair it's not an if stan if and statement it's mm -hmm. a uh, and it's it's if or yeah it's, it's so simple don't do bad you get to keep your skin do bad see that guy he did bad notice how he has no skin interesting we know how this works um <laughs> but i like my skin yeah exactly so you I Be guess I'll stay on the sidewalk. Then. Exactly. Uh, the fear. Don't speed either. <laughs> the the fear of the night lords and their consequences specifically just keeps everyone in line. However, it is the fear keeping them in line. That didn't change who they are underneath. You know, they didn't get better education. They didn't get you know the health care they need. They didn't get any preventive. No. They're just scared out of their minds. And fear comes, it's inherently self-interested. Because I'm only afraid of things because I don't want to die. I like this whole living thing. It's really great. I'm, I'm fond of it. This reality thing, it's the only game in town. And I'm a, I'm a huge fan of it, okay? So, 
in their own self-interest, they will not commit crimes so long as that pervasive fear is just crushing them, right? However, once that source of fear is gone, like say, mm, I don't know, it's dad arriving and telling it to go somewhere else with its full army. <laughs> well, now it's no holds barred. All hell breaks loose. It it went from zero crime to the purge, beyond the purge, beyond the purge. active war zone. Uh-huh. Because all Kurz did was treat the symptoms. He, oh, you have high blood pressure. Don't work out at all. Here's some medicine. Have a nice day. That's that's Kurz's approach, and. This slowly rotted away at their own home world for recruitment. So the night lords they were getting were skeevier and skeevier people being given Kurz's blueprint. Kurz already wasn't a fan when he discovered they were criminals because strong sense of justice. Oh boy, you can see why he starts to hate them as they're coming from Nostromo getting worse and worse with each batch and he's constantly losing sons because the emperor's war is not gonna end ever until everything's gone before it was you know i maybe they were a little bit weird maybe mm. they but um, we could relate we had something in common we yeah. we both really liked skin it, <laughs> but now now it's the blood sucking loan sharks that i'm getting and i can't relate to them about anything they don't want skin they yeah. just want cash and breaking kneecaps too never forget that <laughs> Um, it got so bad that the people of Nostromo started sending out signals begging for Kurz to come back. That's how terrifying it is. And the second Kurz heard about this, he broke out of jail. It's Kurz. He was in jail. We'll get to that when we, whenever we do an episode on him. He immediately broke out of jail, skipped his trial, went right back home, and leveled it. I'm not talking showed up and ended crime. I'm talking orbital bombardment. I mean, his his home world is de facto gone. It's a tomb world. Now. It's uh, yeah, it's a dead world basically. Um, it, it okay. First of all, he broke out of jail, and then he went and destroyed a planet full of innocents. As far as the Imperium's concerned, he's just lost it, and so he's immediately declared rogue. But he's declared rogue right on time for something called the heresy. Ah, oh, great! The thing that gets mentioned literally every episode. Every time with the Primarchs, yeah, and um. They just go with the traitors. They get lumped in with the traitors. They turn on everyone because, come on. You, they, you were already, like, weirdo. Come on. They, they we're knew, weirdos, too. They knew the way the wind was blowing, right? And um, the thing I love about the Night Lords is uh, the, the, the Iron Warriors carried the siege. Oh, my God. They were walking it all the way to Earth. The Night Lords were a thorn in everyone's eye. I'm talking there's no force on the loyalist side that did not have to deal with Kurz directly or the Night Lords in some way. I mean, we've seen it in our episodes. Every time we do an episode on any Primarch, Kurz, Kurz has up. come up. Yeah, he runs around on the lion ship blowing stuff up for months. The lion turns out looking like a schizophrenic, breaking down his own ship and going for weeks at a time to try and find this guy in the most hard game of hide and seek ever. He then shows up to Gilliman's homeworld and starts doing the same thing there. To the both of them yeah. at the same time. And all this while, the Night Lords aren't just twiddling their thumbs. They're marching to Earth, causing terror everywhere they go. It's just so much fun. Oh, and on that one massacre where, you know, like, Istvan 5. That one. Yeah, the, the massacre. The massacre. The, it's, it's the massacre. They also turn on them there, too, so... <laughs> They spat in everyone's eye, and I love them for it. However... The heresy is a situation that is not good for the Night Lords. And in a greater sense than it's just them turning on the Emperor, because they're used to punching down, honestly. Like, the Night Lords don't really get into even fights. They was, win, and they win hard. It was... It, they were just on such a different level, they didn't need to, like, care. So they weren't refined Exactly. Anymore. exactly. And even if, it's a, even if it's a force that matches them, they can focus all of theirs into, like, your weak spot, basically. And it's not fair anymore. And this is something even they have reflected on. Most Night Lords will draw their weapons without any fear in the back of their mind that they're not going to make it back home. It's not even a concern. Night Lords don't have that final stand back against the wall. What am I really made of? I have to make the impossible happen. They don't get that very often. All their brothers do. 
And that's who they're fighting right now. <laughs> so the Night Lords kind of lose a lot of bodies. A, a, a lot of bodies in the process. And uh, while they do make it to, you know, the, the siege, um, they do lose, as well as all the traitors, because that's how this story That's how ends. this shook out. And um, this really breaks them, right? It, it, it shows the cracks, and then Kurz's, um honestly, accepting his own death is what shatters everything. And I really love what Kurz tells them before he does that, because... Like, somebody asks him, like, okay, who, well, who's going to lead once you're gone if this really does happen? Uh, do you have anyone set in place? And he's like, many people are going to claim that I appointed them, but I hate all of you. I've destroyed my own homeworld so that more of you don't get made. Do you think I care for even a moment what happens to you after I die? Yeah, that's their dad. You can see why the moment he died, first of all, they ignored his first order, which is don't kill the person who killed me. They, oh boy, they did that. <laughs> oh boy, they did that. And then they immediately shattered. I mean, it's like rogue war bands. And now, for the most part, um, smash cut to the modern day. They don't take, okay, a lot of the Primarchs take fights for honor, for glory, for vengeance. I'll get you back. Ah, um, They do it for the profit, baby. They have checks that need to clear. They have things they need to buy. And so that's what they do it for. It's for glory. It's for money. It's for petty vengeance. That's pretty much the only reason they do it. I mean, they just oh. released the Potato Peeler 10,000. And it's like the new version of what we already had. I mean, we gotta keep up to date. Exactly. Um, they also do it for the love of the game. Because, again, arts and crafts. But, you know, with flesh. With, with, yeah. It is, it, is, it, is, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's nine words. That's their thing. And all the while, they carry with them the burden um, that they destroyed their own recruitment homeworld, and their dad never loved them. Yeah. And some of them are even aware of their own hypocrisy. Um, there's this guy, uh, Sevatar. I. Th he deserves an episode to himself, I think. I I I'm, I'm debating it, because he did apparently die off screen in the heresy. But like, did he though? Is is the situation he's uh, in? You know I what see. I mean? And he's really cool. He's a really cool night lord. He has a lot of good quotes, uh, and he's the only person ever to call Kurz on his shenanigans, because Kurz says, "Oh, the worst thing is going to happen. It always will." And he simply asks, "When have you tried to make the best thing happen?" Because Sevatar knows what he is. He's like, "I I do this because I like this. I know there are other options. This is fun." But Kurz likes to pretend a lot of the time that there is no, my hands are tied. Dad made me this way. I have to. And Savitar just calls him on it. It's just like, no, 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 bud. I'm the way that I am because I am the way that I am. You have the room to change. Yeah, and you don't. You choose not to. And uh, he's, yeah, I think he deserves, minimum he's going to be in the Kurz episode. But uh, that is the Night Lords. Uh, pretty much summed up all their philosophies, the rough way they think, why they are mortifying to meet i'm talking the ones you least want to meet not even in a dark alleyway but on a sunny day walking through the park you don't want to see them um they have very cool armor uh they actually use a lot of nostromo on all over their regalia and stuff like they really are in tune to the culture despite the fact that they blew it up so there's that uh but yeah this was a very fun episode we will see you next week for the patreon episode that will definitely be night lord themed and next weekend for possibly a Kurz episode, if not second place in the bracket. So make your voices heard in the comments, and we will see what happens. As always, thank you for being you, and thank you to the names that are about to go all over the screen. They've already been scrolling across the screen. Have they? Have they, yes. I don't think they will. Yeah, but they will. we'll see.